Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a great evening. It was a cool one here in Wichita with winds 20, 25, and uh, had to uh, put on some extra gear to go out walking last night. Um, so when the wind blows from the north, it's pretty darn cool. When it blows from the south, it warms up. we got a warm-up in the forecast. No moisture in this forecast, though, so we'll be awaiting a nice big buildup of humidity and the next cold front to come roaring out of Canada and the Rockies to kick off or trigger our next moisture event. Um, overnight market's pretty quiet. Uh, the E-mini is off. Uh, Europe's market sold. Uh, China's market sold. And um, that probably uh, supported our markets. Uh, so we move sideways. You can see that volume is a little bit higher. Uh, than yesterday's, equal to the day before that. So uh, Friday's volume is held. We're dealing with a P shape right here. If the ES continues to sell, like we said yesterday, we don't want to be short. Uh, FOMC starts today. Most of the tape chatter from the Fed watching community right now is interest rates up. No sooner than September, the June uh, interest rate increase will be passed uh, because of first quarter economic weakness. Uh, first quarter economic weakness right now uh, will be attributed to several things. The weather, uh, the uh, strike uh, by union members on the West Coast, and um, stronger dollar. Uh, so uh, we will see uh, how that shakes out. Today's news, Case Schiller, no one will pay any attention to, plus 7 tenths of a percent. Uh, consumer confidence is a big number, 103. Uh, there's room for disappointment in this one. This one can come in a little bit lower. Uh, it is primarily stock market, and then the Richmond Fed at minus two. So the economic news, the hard economic news, the ma uh, both the minor and the macro, uh, continue to come in, generally speaking, lower than forecast. Not in every case, but if you go back and look, you look at the graphs where they um, uh, plot all the news taken together, the world's economy and our economy are slowing right now. Uh, and that makes it difficult for the feds to raise interest rates. So. I think what the Fed can do right now is, oh, yeah, we're going to raise interest rates, and um, we're going to take a hard look at the data. And right now, uh, our decision will be based on improving economic conditions. And, um, probably won't be able to do it in June, but we will do it at some point, and I'll leave it at that. So uh, right now, we're like just like we were yesterday. We have um, resistance in the uh, 12 to 16 area if that pops out. Uh, then it's going to jump up to the 20 to 24. Uh, we got a P shape, so we should go a little bit higher. We got a shot at stops above the overnight session uh, high. Uh, so I'd like to sell against this area right up in here. So we're going to make 13 to 17 sell one, and then 19 to 23 sell two. Um, on the uh, buy side, I still like the 1 to 5. And just like last night, we said it might take a 9 to get in. So we'll put, uh, right now they've gotten stops below 8. And we're at 9.5 right now. So I think we have a chance to have a shot at stops on both sides of this. So we're going to play for 5, but we may have to pay as high as 8. Um, and then 25 to 29. Down to the direction of the E-mini. In my not so humble opinion. That's really bad when you get an ego as big as this. And of course, that's usually taken care of by a bad trade. <clears throat> A very humbling game.
Normally we'd expect this auction to be a little bit lower. It's a little bit tougher to move this paper. So we're going to play for that, but like I said, we may have to adjust uh, shortly after uh, the opening. We'll have to just see how she plays. Okay, the knob spread shrunk a little bit. Uh, last rotate take the start of that distribution yesterday started at 6208. Got an overnight session low of 16, so I'll make 13 to 17 by one. And then five to nine by two. On the uh, sell side, um, pretty aggressive. 27 to 31, we're gonna play for a little contraction in the knob spread. Then three to seven for sell two, right where we were yesterday. Gold's holding its own. Uh, it hadn't given up much. You can see this two-letter ledge at 98 held, and we're at 02, so this 1,200 to 98 by one. Uh, we had a breakout at 96. Um, we had the uh, last rotation down stop at 90, so we'll make 95, 93 for buy two. On the uh, sell side, five to seven, and then 10 to 12. The FOMC meeting does tend to freeze large players. Institutions, they're uh, driven by their investment guidelines. Uh, those are pretty well locked in. Most of them uh, have to be 96, 98% fully invested in whatever their investment guidelines are. So they have a little flexibility on timing, but they don't really have much flexibility at all in what they can do. Uh, most institutional uh, funds, uh, they're so large, uh, whatever their particular market does is how they do. Uh, then they fight like hell to separate themselves from the others in that same complex or that same sector of the market. Uh, but <clears throat> they are, bottom line, fundamental players, and they're willing to give up a little trade location because they're already long uh, in front of this news. So we don't expect a lot of uh, large financial institutions uh, outside of hedge funds to be playing today or tomorrow. The euro has maintained its strength. The uh, the bad guy on the Greek negotiating team has been kicked off. Um, like we said, the euro tends to rally into an announcement, and they see what the announcement is. Once the announcement is done, uh, they've got a <coughs> um, new playing field to take, and then, then it tends to sell. So we're getting a lot of strength right here. Uh, so pointed higher, 75, sell one. 110, that very, you know, limit sell against 110 is uh, probably the easiest trade to sell right here. They might go for stops above that, but it's a pretty round number. Uh, the breakout from London came at uh, 9.06. We're at 52, so we'll make 109.25 buy one, and then 109 even for buy two. But um, there was an article out that, the um, Greek government will fall 400 million euros short <clears throat> of uh, their payroll commitments. Uh, I imagine that's been talked about all week that those people will get IOUs. Yeah, in our government, uh, everybody talks about, yeah, you can't shut down the government. All these people will be laid off, the uh, financial hardships. That's baloney. Uh, these people, that's getting an, uh, an extra paid vacation. You just probably can't get too far. You can't travel anywhere. Um, and I'm sure the same will be for Greek government workers. <clears throat> uh, 
Well, they can probably start a big email campaign, Fitzroy. Hello, Mr. Cochran. You know, misspell your name. Uh, I'm a Greek government employee. Uh, I find myself um, in a need for cash right now, but I have this IOU for my government for $10 million. Uh, if you'll send me a check for $500 U.S. dollars, I'll be happy to uh, um, forward this IOU for $10 million to you. I think that's how that works. <clears throat> Yeah, they are desperate. I mean, it's um, it's it's not good. And uh, every country in the world uh, uh, that has been borrowing to spend, one day, if they can't inflate their way out of it, one day will come to the same position that Greece is in, and Cyprus, and everybody, and Argentina, and Venezuela, and Ecuador, and Brazil. They're all headed as fast as they can for the same spot. And the only reason that this is delayed is that there's not a major currency in the world uh, that's not doing the same thing right now. Okay, we like the 56, 56, 50 buy area in crude. <clears throat> pretty much where we were yesterday from 56 even all the way up to 56.75 so we'll make 56.50 and a, 56 and a quarter by one and then 55.50 75 by two and um, on the uh, sell side got all this volume up at 57 we're pretty close so 57, 57 and a quarter, sell one, 57, 50, 75, sell two. Can't see that there's anything going on in the energy markets any different than yesterday. So what's really behind uh, besides tweaking the United States? Um, Russia's sell of their... Um, air defense system to Iran. Uh, some of the speculation is, is that Russia, because of what Saudi Arabia has done to their cash flow, is indirectly taking on Saudi Arabia through Iran. And we'll have to see how that, how that plays out. <clears throat> Okay, uh, FOMC tomorrow. Uh, the tendency is to run this thing up into the FOMC announcement. So at some point, I think we find buyers today. So this 90 to 95 area looks like reasonable support. I'm going to do a London split. And uh, we've got a double test at 95. So we've got a pretty fair shot at getting stops below 95. So we're going to start off trying to buy 90s to 92s. But I'm going to put a question mark at 95. That consumer confidence number is pretty darn healthy. And I like the 85, 87 area. Um, London's high is 3. Um, the Globex session off the opening high is 2106. Uh, 2100 is um, where resistance is right now. And we're there. So. Uh, can we get stops above 2106? I don't. It, I don't think so. Not off the first rotation. So uh, we're going to make 2100, 2102 sell one, and we'd like like to see our setup in there, and then five to seven sell two. And some of the articles a little bit. I'm not saying nonsensical, but. Why the selling overnight? Some people were looking for any excuse to take profits before the FOMC announcement. And if that is true, then all the supposition that the uh, FOMC announcement will push interest rates in bumps at least until September. Um, one of those stories, um, you know, is wanting. 
when you get down and look at the facts. So um, it'll take about 20 minutes to get everything up and posted. I'm going to get busy on that. I'll see you as soon as I can.